Hello, I'm Amy Zaby with the Jerusalem Connection Report for Friday, May 12th. This is a red alert. Reflections on Solidarity. Last Friday, May 5th, I had the privilege and honor to attend the Christian Israeli Solidarity Breakfast at the Israeli Embassy in Washington, D.C. This occurred the day after the National Day of Prayer. The, US, uh, the Israeli Embassy welcomed in about 150 Christian leaders from around the country and even North America as an opportunity to hear their ambassador speak and for us to offer support and comfort and to address particular concerns that we can work on as well as relish in victories. Ambassador Ron Dermer graciously welcomed us into the meeting area of the Embassy and it was a wonderful and optimistic event. Ambassador German mentioned that even with the overt bias in the UN and the BDS, boycott, divest, and sanction activities on college campuses around North America and in Europe, and the mainstream media bias, Israel has indeed been seeing the fruits of its labors. At only 69 years young, Israel has now become one of the top seven world powers in terms of stability, economy, and GDP. As well, it is the third most stable economy in the world. This is despite the anti-Semitism and the anti-Zionist rhetoric around the world and in international bodies. The power that Israel holds, we would all say, stems from its God-given uh, promise as well as its God-given blessings. However, on a more tangible way to document this, one can see these advancements in power both in the military with the counterterrorism and security measures that Israel had no choice but to innovate an event as well as their marketplace a hold in the technology industry, as well as the medical industries and agricultural industries. The result of this both military and economic power is that Israel now has its own diplomatic power. It is now going outside the UN and other organized bodies and working directly with other countries for trade agreements, for uh, innovating agreements as far as uh, research and development of various um, uh, technologies and innovations. So this is all great news. And what a thrill it was to hear Ambassador Derman say that with the appointment of Hurricane Haley to the end, to the UN, we have a new hope. Also, the blessing of a pro-Israel administration is something that this new um, decade of, of promise now exists. He also lamented the fact that when the UN passed its last resolution condemning Israel in the form of denying its historicity and its uh, footprint and connection to the land of Israel as well as the city of Jerusalem, he was dumbfounded to see that so many world leaders stood up and applauded an overt lie, an overt slap in the face to the Jewish people and the Jewish culture as well as the nation of Israel as there is 3,000 years of um, verifiable, verifiable historicity of Jews in the land of Israel and the city of Jerusalem as well as architectural evidence overwhelmingly to prove that point. The other thing we mentioned is that the word Zion, which in the Bible happens to be used hundreds of times in the form of uh, an optimistic and good thing, is now being used as a dirty word among organizations that seek to defile or defame or remove Israel from the map. It was later that day at another luncheon in Arlington where a group of Christian leaders came to assemble to see how and what we can do over the coming year to continue the momentum to support the nation of Israel. Fifteen organizations representing all sorts of types of agencies including prayer groups, conservative groups, political groups, theological groups, three different media agencies as well as the State Department were all in attendance to figure out what actions can be taken to continue the momentum of bringing the truth about who and what Israel is and the Jewish people to the world so that policies set at national levels, at local levels, as well as international levels are all reflectant of the truth and the promise that Israel has the right to exist. On Sunday, I have to mention, my church had uh, Psalm 84 as the passage of study. 
And it reminded me not only the plight that we all take in our personal spiritual journey to see and yearn for God, um, it also reminded me of the journey that the nation of Israel has taken, especially in its modern state over the last 69 years. I encourage you, if you have time this week, to go back and read Psalm 84. It is not very long. And in that psalm, it talks about how we are called to journey or pilgrimage to meet God. And in that journey, we will go through the Valley of Baca, which is not a literal place, but a uh, figurative place of mourning or fear or troubles. Um, it's not a good place. And it is while we are in those valleys that we need to roll up our sleeves and work hard. We need to dig wells, as it says in the psalm, which is not an easy thing to do. But it means that we have our own responsibility to work hard. And while we're working hard, seek God's strength. And he will then bring his strength to the work. And the result is to meet God in Zion. And that is the journey. So I sat listening to that sermon, and while I thought of myself and my own life, as well as close friends of mine who are going through things, it also reminded me of the 69 years of the history of modern Israel. Have they endured wars and attacks and terrorism and uh, bad PR and condemnations? They rolled their sleeves up and they got to work and they innovated, and while asking God for strength, he gave them that strength, and the victories are now being seen. So it is with that that I report that the Solidarity event was one of um, inspiration and um, encouragement, and it has fueled my fire for the next year to get to work and do what I can to keep the truth coming out and to yearn to see God in Zion. Shavua Tov. Have a great week, and Shabbat Shalom.